Well, in this video, I'm just going to show the machining of the three main body components for this. And I basically fast forwarded through almost all of it. It's running about three times normal speed. It's all pretty much basic machining. I just kind of want to show the process that I went through to, to get to this point. This is the body of it, which is our two inch pipe. Just squared up the ends and we're uh, going to face them off. I think as soon as we get here, why we move on to the internal threading of these. Here we're just measuring it for the length. And uh, there again, I'm not sure that there's anything super, super precision that has to be done here. I've done all the machining in the three jaw chuck on this. There's not uh, anything that's really precise enough that I feel I need the, the four jaw chuck for. This, I think, is a really good, you know, kind of beginner intermediate project for the home shop. Uh, uh, you won't have a whole lot of utilization for it unless it's being built for a CNC machine, so you're probably a little more than just a basic machinist at this point in time. But uh, I just kind of want to show that this is not as complicated as a lot of the times it's made out to be. Now, I'm considering this a relatively precision instrument. You know, it's going to give me good accuracy or as good as accuracy as I can obtain on my CNC mill. There's only a very few items that are precision turned and or precision assembled and those are all done in one setup. The three components they need to be fairly well concentric and, and in line with each other or on axis and obviously more accurate is going to be better but by the same token the only places that are really important are the top that engages in the spindle on the mill in this case and then the probe on the bottom those need to be on axis and, and parallel with each other here I've just set up a piece of long stock I'm starting to turn the uh, upper Tormac style shank that will go into the three quarter inch tool holder all I've done is faced off the end and then I center drilled it uh, this is a long piece of stock I just didn't want to waste any stock so to get a uh, to get a center point on the other end I was able to do that relatively easily even with this long piece of stock once you get it turned between centers it's going to be fine now this three quarter inch diameter and we're just roughing this off here we're we're burning up a lot of this cutting oil that's on there this is a lighter cutting oil than I normally use and I'm roughing so I'm pushing this this tooling pretty hard it's it's high speed steel tooling for the most part I believe this may actually be a carbide insert cutter um, and I'm just using it as a roughing cutter is all it is just get that material off of there we need to have a nice concentric three-quarter inch shank on this to to fit into the tool holder and the face of it that's going to butt up against the the spindle needs to be perpendicular to the to the shank so that in essence is a precision turned operation or a fairly precise operation we want it to be right but there's nothing that complicated about it you know you're here I'm I turned the three-quarter inch shank to size or close to size because I've I've done final turning once I've let it cool down a little bit because I've got this pretty warm just hogging off this material here I'm just cutting a bevel on it but all we need to do is have the top surface be perpendicular to that shank and that's all we need all right, well here's the arbor for our TTS holder and we've pretty much mimicked what uh, Tormax done with their TTS holders. We've given us this much to give us our strength just like a standard holder would have and we've added 3 8 inch and this will be our thread relief. Now this is oversized from our pipe. What we're going to do is we're just going to chuck this up. We'll turn the OD to I believe it's 1.914 and uh, then we'll go ahead turn it down and thread it. 20 threads per inch to match and all it's got to do is match the internal threads on that. So we'll go ahead and set it up on the lathe and do that. Here I'm just turning the outer diameter, um, just getting it down close. It's there again, nothing that precision. It's this is more for appearance than anything else. Um, here we're gonna go ahead and face off the, the face of it and uh, get that square. And here we're just smoothing up the, the interface of that. Now we're going to go back in here and cut a relief on down in there. And the reason for that relief is for our spring to seat in. So it seats concentric when we assemble this because there's a spring that bears against that. And that's what we've done here is we've, we're just measuring for that 
for that thread relief or for that spring relief. And this is just measuring off. I'm running off the digital readout. This is going to be the start of my relief cut for where our threads are going to go. Um, I will quite often take a parting tool and set that for my relief cut and begin that when we're going to thread to a shoulder like that. I'll go back and finish squaring that face up later, but that gives me a good visual indicator of how far up I want to go or how far I want to turn for, for threads. There again, just setting our diameter and turning it for our for our uh, threads. And once we finish this, we'll go back and cut the threads themselves. And I use this as a cut and cut and fit type of procedure. You know, this could all be measured out and everything, but this is not a production run. This is a a one-off item basically. Um, so all the, the threads have to do is have a nice fit onto the body that we've already turned and threaded. Shift it into back gear here, and we're engaging our lead screw there, and getting our feet engaged, feet lever engaged. Sometimes it's a little fiddly on this lay that drops right in, but if it's not, uh, if it's not lined up, why it won't, it won't engage, of course. And here we're just going to go along, cut our threads, and like I say, this is cut and fit. Get a, get a nice thread fit on these. And uh, once we get that, we'll clean it up, go ahead and bevel our edges and set our final length on this. And then I think we'll go back and probably, I, I think I'm going back and going to take a little more off the outer diameter just to match the, match the outer body or the outer diameter of the body a little better than what it is right now. Like I say, this is all pretty straightforward machining. You know, this is you can kind of jump through parts of this, and you're not missing out on a whole lot unless you want to see the entire process start to finish. There again, we're running about three times speed. There's our body fit. I visually check the OD on that, on the shank. You guys will run a file lightly across those threads. Sometimes I will too. I just wanted to, wanted to smooth up those threads a little bit in the way they seated. And there again, high precision here. It looked like about that much is what I need to take off to pretty well match the body. If a person was really so inclined, you could get the whole assembly put together, set it back up in the lathe, and you could turn them all as a, as a complete set. I didn't really feel that was necessary. This is just a little bevel on the back side of the shank on the top, just to smooth it out a little bit. And there's our body and shank. This is just kind of polishing the bottom side of that body. None of this will show, none of it's real precision. I just want it to be fairly smooth. Don't want to have a rough finish that I'm going to cut myself while assembling. And I want a nice smooth seat for that spring to seat against. This, I believe, we're just starting to cut the, the nose piece on this. This was just a probably inch and a half, two inch long piece of aluminum solid stock. 
we're facing off the outer face of it and there again back to standard machining we're going to get this true to the world we're going to turn the outer diameter and thread it and then we'll go back in and uh, cut the hole in the bottom of that here's our outer diameter turn or it will be our outer diameter turn there again no need to get out a micrometer a caliper is plenty plenty accurate for this there again I'm not downplaying the importance of precision on your parts and and the better you can make a part the, the better it comes out the better you're gonna feel about it but there's a certain point where you only need to go to a certain level of precision otherwise you'll never get anything done it'll take you forever Should be awful close to our OD turn right there, I think. Oh, one more time here, it looks like. There's our OD turn. Oh, actually, that was we were happy with OD, we were cutting for our threads, our major thread diameter there there's our thread relief Be our thread back, shift it back into back gear again. Again, cut and fit were a little bit tight there. Okay, now we're going to go back and bore the inner diameter. And we're just starting a center drill here. We'll go back and go to our full-size drill. I don't remember exactly what size we were using there. It was pretty close to whatever it was called for in the prints. And all we're doing is getting a hole down deep enough so that we can go ahead and bore it out. So we've got a inner diameter there. Now to bore this out, this is actually a carbide boring bar. It's one of the cheap ones that I've reground. This is one of the few carbide tools that I actually use on this lathe. Um, for finished turning and this is one I've got one item that I produce that um, has a precision bore on it uh, or a precision board bar that I want a real nice a board hole on it that I want a real nice finish this boring bar does it um, I really baby this boring bar the reason it works as well as it does part of the reason is it's 
primarily done for small holes, usually under 3 eighths of an inch, and we're running a higher surface speed. So on this lathe, I can get a pretty good finish with it. Um, you'll see it's a little bit different holder, and uh, maybe at some point I'll explain that it was actually set up for another tool post. Um, I've got another tool post that I built for this lathe and quite a few tool holders for it so it will adapt to these AXA or to this AXA tool holder although I have to shim it. So here what we've done is we are parting off the the nose piece. I've gone ahead and started parting it. That was just a chamfer tool. I'll go back. I chamfer the back edge, get a little bit of a bevel on there and then we'll finish parting it off. For aluminum, this is just a little WD-40. I use this for parting off. Um, WD-40 works real good as a lubricant on aluminum, both in the lathe and in the mill. So I don't use it a tremendous amount anymore unless I'm doing oh, like a deep part or, or something that way. It just uh, works a little bit better than some of the other lubricants that I run. And there's our nose piece. So that with the exception of kind of finishing it out a little bit. Um, it's all finished to the fit to the body. We just pulled the shank off. Now we're actually going to turn the, all we're going to do is chamfer the inner edge that where we parted it off before. And there again we're back to concent concentricity. It's plenty good enough to get a real nice little bevel on the inside of that bore. Um, and all we've done is broken the edge. Just going to smooth it up a little bit and um, that's all it takes. So that uh, that kind of shows that we're plenty concentric for this operation. All right. Well, here's our three body components, or our three main body components. This is our shank relief for our uh, Tormac style DTS tool holder. We're threaded at the back. <clears throat> It will thread on and tighten right there. And here's the nose cap that we just now finished turning. And it will thread in there just like that. And bottom out. Of course, when we get that far, why, next time I'm running the bluing tanks, we'll throw the shank in probably. And when we get that far, we'll go ahead and powder coat the body, main part of the body. Now, the next thing to do on this is we will have to lay it out, drill it, and tap it for our three adjustment screws in the bottom. And the body will get um, drilled for an LED. Uh, cable will have to hold for the cable cabling and a hole for the LED will go in there. So I think this is where we're going to leave this part. So hopefully you found something a little bit interesting here. If you did you might want to hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification you'll know when I put out a new video and any comments or suggestions leave them in the comment section for me below and as always thanks for taking the time to watch.